Good morning, my fellow nurses and would-be nurses. Before I start with the lecture, let me first present to you a scenario to open this presentation. This scenario is about Sally, who has been brought to the emergency room because she has, she has been found to be unresponsive by her family members on the bathroom floor. You notice that Sally is breathing only 7 times per minute. Aside from this, what other data would you want to obtain? So, you hook Sally up to the monitor and notice that her Otisat is 77% and her Glasgow Coma Scale is a 3, meaning that she does not open her eyes or move her body in response to any stimulation, even painful stimuli and makes no vocalizations at all. Her lung sounds are clear, but her respirations are very shallow and slow. What kind of problem is Sally most likely having? A problem with ventilation or a problem with oxygenation? Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the center of our discussion. So, Allow me to welcome you all to this lecture on Handling Patients with Problems in Oxygenation Part 1 of 2 brought to you by the Philippine Continuing Professional Development Training Center, Incorporated. Humans and mammals in general and the bioenergetic processes that maintain cellular integrity depend on a continuous supply of oxygen to sustain aerobic metabolism. Reduced oxygen delivery and failure of cellular use of oxygen occur in various circumstances and if this is not recognized, it can result to organ dysfunction and even death. So prevention, early identification, and correction of tissue hypoxia are essential skills among nurses. An understanding of the key steps in oxygen transport within the body is essential to avoid tissue hypoxia. Although oxygen is the substrate that cells use in the greatest quantity, marami tayong ginagamit na oxygen sa loob ng katawan natin. And dito din nakadepend ang a lot of aerobic metabolism. Pati yung cellular integrity depends on this oxygen supply. The tissues, our cells, have no storage system for oxygen. Yes, you heard it right. We do not have a storage system for oxygen within our body. So, our cells rely on a continuous supply at a rate that precisely matches our changing metabolic requirements. Now, if this supply fails, even for a few minutes, tissue hypoxia or hypoxemia may develop. So guys, let us first review some key terms related to oxygenation concepts. I know you are familiar of this, but it would still be good. It's nice to know once more, nice to listen once more to what these are. So these are oxygenation, ventilation, diffusion, and perfusion. Oxygenation is the process of supplying oxygen to the body's cells, while ventilation is the process of exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide, which is essentially Breathing. So, yung ventilation is breathing. Oxygen comes into the body via the airway and it is offloaded onto the red blood cells while carbon dioxide diffuses across the membrane into the alveoli and it is then exhaled. Then, so you breathe in oxygen and you exhale carbon dioxide. So, that is the process called ventilation. Diffusion, on the other hand, involves substances moving across concentration gradients from areas of higher concentration. Ito yung favorite ata natin no, sa pathophysiology. It involves moving across concentration gradients from areas of higher concentration to areas of, yes, lower concentration. You are correct. This is the process involved with gas exchange. Now, yung perfusion naman is the body process of supplying oxygenated blood to the cells. So, sa perfusion, involved na yung cells, yung end user. 
Perfusion, again, is the body process of supplying oxygenated blood to the cells and is reliant on adequate cardiac output in order to be optimal. So, may interplane na dito yung cardiovascular system and the amount of cardiac output. So, the mechanisms that is involved in maintaining adequate cardiac output also is essential in this um, phenomenon. No? So, oxygenation, ventilation, diffusion, and perfusion. With every inhalation, our air fills the lungs, and with every exhalation, it rushes back out. During inhalation, the diaphragm descends, creating a negative pressure around the lungs, and they begin to inflate, drawing air from outside the body. Can you imagine? So, when we inhale, our diaphragm descends. So, pag mag-descend yan, parang lalapad yung area na makakapag-expand yung lungs. Now, this creates a negative pressure around the lungs, drawing in air from outside the body. The percentage, kasi, kasi yung, yung pressure sa loob ng intrathoracic cavity around the lungs becomes negative. Mas mababa siya kesa sa pressure sa labas. That is why, with air moving from areas of greater concentration to lower concentration, napapasok yung hangin ngayon sa loob ng body. Guys, the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere, in atmospheric air is constant. Lagi siyang nasa 21%. And, this does not change with altitude. Diba? What? Sabi, especially with... Uh, sickle cell disease it changes with altitude no the concentration of oxygen in the air is constant yung nag iiba iba and is affected by weather and altitude is the atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure high altitudes can cause low oxygen saturation levels or desaturation of an individual's blood it happens because of low atmospheric pressure at high altitudes. Doon na pumapasok yung problem natin with our patients with sickle cell disease. Okay? To better understand and to better imagine this mechanism, I am so excited that I found this video on YouTube. It's, it's, it was produced by Dr. Bruce Forsha about breathing mechanics so i'm so excited to share this with you so if 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 you may please indulge and click on the icon on this powerpoint presentation that will direct you to the youtube presentation to the youtube video of dr forsha on breathing mechanics and then after viewing the video let us proceed to the next slide
During inhalation, air enters the body through the nasal cavity, located just inside the nose. As air passes through the nasal cavity, the air is warmed to body temperature and humidified. The respiratory tract is coated with mucus to seal the tissues from direct contact with air. Mucus is high in water. As air crosses these surfaces of the mucous membranes, it picks up water. These processes help equilibrate the air to the body conditions, reducing any damage that cold, dry air can cause. Particulate matter that is floating in the air is removed in the nasal passages via mucus and cilia. The processes of warming, humidifying, and removing particles are important protective mechanisms that prevent damage to the trachea and lungs. Thus, inhalation serves several purposes in addition to bringing oxygen into the respiratory system. So, may protective function si ventilation. Now, any condition that disturbs this mechanism will cause the problems in oxygenation. For example, smoking. It paralyzes our cilia. So, the protective function of the cilia is destroyed. Hearing rhinitis. Diba? Pag may rhinitis ka, there is inflammation. Your turbinates are inflamed. Its function of warming the air and protecting you becomes disturbed also. Then, um, it is also important to note that the air that we breathe should be humidified. Hindi siya pwedeng dry air ang pumapasok. Ang indication nito, class, or yung implication nito, rather, is that when we deliver supplemental oxygen to our patients, yung humidifier, yung may water, that's our humidifier, it is important that it is filled up to the level na allowed. May, sa humidifier, may nakalagay na water level. So, we have, as nurses, we have to check kung nasa level na yun yung water. Because if it is not, the, the, the patient can be inhaling dry air and it can be hazardous to the respiratory system. What other conditions can uh, disturb the function of this, ito sa, sa ventilation? Meron, pwede yung merong dried mucus doon sa nasal catheter. No, our patients who are hooked on nasal catheter or nasal prong, minsan merong, mm, what's this, namuon na, 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 na mucus na dry na, mm, nakaka-obstruct sa breathing. Okay? Yung turbinates also, when there is allergy, and there is this very long na cold na the turbinates can inflame and so its warming mechanism and its filtering mechanism is also destroyed moving on to diffusion and perfusion let us watch you if you will recall now earlier sinabi natin yung diffusion is the gas exchange nasa alveoli siya and the capillary end of the blood vessel it's the, the exchange between the carbon dioxide and oxygen yung perfusion naman may involvement na ni cell yung movement ni carbon dioxide and ni oxygen to add across the member the cellular membrane and your blood vessel or the capillary now let us watch the following video on gas exchange para mas ma illustrate better on the next slide there is this other icon uh, now, there is this icon leading to a video on gas exchange. Okay, please watch that and I'll join you in a while. Okay, there you go. So, sa gas exchange, there can, and again, any condition that will disturb this mechanism will cause problems in a person's oxygenation status. Gaya ng mga lower lung disorders na ito. Yung ating sari kay COVID, fibrosis of the lungs, yung pneumonia, lung cancer, tuberculosis, lung abscess. Naku, lalo na yung atelectasis, eh, wala na siyang pap, wala ng alveolar sacs na papasukan si oxygen. And of course, our COPD. No? Sa 
Problems naman on perfusion, anemia. Baka konti lang yung sasakyan ni blood vessel. Konti lang yung red blood cells natin sa katawan. So, anemia can also manifest as symptoms na may difficulty of breathing, activity intolerance, okay, shock, especially hemorrhagic shock. We're talking about the amount of cardiac output. Hindi na siya enough. Cuts and wounds. No, may interference sa ano. May in, I'm sorry, may interruption sa supply ng blood somewhere. And of course, your blood clots and even your air emboli as obstructions to blood flow. So, those are our basic concepts. Oxygenation, ventilation, diffusion, and perfusion. We are discussing those para mas makita natin gaano kalawak ang coverage ng problem in oxygenation. Anybody who has problems in oxygenation, makikita ninyo may activity intolerance. Bakit? Kasi si oxygen is a primary ingredient in the production of ATP or energy in the body. So, may activity intolerance siya. Okay? Difficulty of breathing. Kasi you're gasping for air as a defense mechanism of the body to compensate. A compensatory mechanism of the body to compensate for the low oxygen levels or the perceived low oxygen levels of the body. Okay? Let's move on then. Now, moving on with our lecture on patients presenting with disturbances in ventilation, diffusion, and perfusion. We need to connect this concept to the actual disease. Yung concept na diniscuss natin kanina. Let us connect these concepts to the actual disease and their possible complications. So we can anticipate the care that we need to give or we can anticipate what can happen to our patients and we will be able to prevent them from happening as much as, much as we can. Kasi nurses are the ones who are with the patient 24-7. So tayo yung nakaka-observe sa development nila sa progress ng sakit nila or their reactions to their illness and their even or their responses to the medications. So, kung alam natin na the patient is having a problem with ventilation or nakikita nyo, nako, my patient can have problems with perfusion because kula siya ng red blood cells, there's severe anemia because may kidney disease siya. So, we can anticipate. Okay? Okay. Our patients who are having disturbances in ventilation, diffusion, and perfusion, isa doon, okay, papasok tayo sa concept na ito, na systems approach. So, magsimula tayo sa brain. Okay? Cerebral hypoxia. Cerebral hypoxia occurs when there is not enough oxygen getting to the brain. The brain needs a constant supply of oxygen and nutrients to function. Sino yung nagdadala ng oxygen and nutrients sa brain? It's the blood vessels. So, if there is an interruption in this delivery of nutrients and oxygen, pwedeng magkaroon ng cerebral hypoxia. Aba, cerebral hypoxia affects the largest parts of the brain pa man din. Okay? Nasa cerebral hemispheres mismo yung affected. Pero pag sinabi natin cerebral hypoxia, this term is often used to refer to a lack of oxygen supply to the entire brain. At yung brain cells natin, pagod, ay very sensitive to a lack of oxygen. Some brain cells start dying less than 5 minutes after their oxygen supply disappears. As a result, brain hypoxia can rapidly cause severe brain damage or death. Okay, guys, in cerebral hypoxia, sometimes only the oxygen supply is interrupted. This can be caused by breathing in smoke, such as during a fire, okay? carbon monoxide poisoning, when there is choking, mga diseases that prevent movement of the breathing muscles. This is a neuromuscular disorder, our amyotropic lateral sclerosis or our ALS. High altitudes kasi kumukonti yung atmospheric pressure ni oxygen. Pressure on the windpipe or trachea na ipit na 
ha, sasakyan, for example, or strangulation. In other cases naman, kanina yung diniscuss natin, ano lang yun, sinasabi natin oxygen lang yung hindi nakapasok sa brain. No? Pero pwede din na pati both oxygen and nutrient are stopped. This is caused by cardiac arrest, cardiac arrhythmia, no? complications of general anesthesia, Ako. drowning, drug overdose, injuries to a newborn that occurred before, during, or soon after birth, such as in cerebral palsy, with stroke also, and with very low blood pressure. Okay, from the brain, baba tayo sa heart. So, kung sa brain, myo, uh, ano ang tawag doon, cerebral hypoxia sa heart, we are looking at myocardial ischemia, which occurs when blood flow to your heart is reduced, preventing the heart muscle from receiving enough oxygen. The reduced blood flow is usually the result of a partial or complete blockage of the heart's arteries. Now, because of this, the heart's muscle's ability to pump blood is very much reduced. Okay, now let us move on to assessment. Okay, a patient's oxygenation status is routinely assessed using pulse oximetry, referred to as oxygen saturation. Otosat is an estimated oxygen level based on the saturation of hemoglobin measured by a pulse oximeter. Ito yung lagi nating nakikita, di ba? It's what we usually use. Because the majority of oxygen carried in the blood is attached to hemoglobin within the red blood cell, oxygen saturation estimates how much hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen. So the target range of otosat for an adult, yung usual, yung normal is between 94 to 98%. Okay, minsan... Um, nagkakapalit ito sa ano, value ng, ng partial pressure of oxygen sa ABG. But since nowadays, this is already very common. Marami nang may pulse ox natin sa hospital. So, alam na natin yung normal. No? Hindi na tayo nalilito with the um, ABG result sa partial pressure of oxygen. So, all the set is 94 to 98%. But guys, for patients with chronic respiratory conditions such as your chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, mas mababa po yung ating normal or yung ating target levels, which is 88 to 92%. I repeat, it's 88 to 92% for our patients with COPD. Now, although Otoset is an efficient, non-invasive method to assess the patient's oxygenation status it is an estimate and not always accurate for example if a patient is severely anemic and has a decreased level of hemoglobin on the blood in the blood the autosat reading is affected decreased peripheral circulation can also cause a misleading low autosat levels there is a more specific measurement of oxygen levels in the blood though. It is through our arterial blood gas. ABG results are often obtained for patients who have deteriorating or unstable respiratory status requiring urgent and emergency treatment. An ABG is a blood sample that is typically drawn from the radial artery by a respiratory therapist, emergency or critical care nurse, or healthcare provider. ABG results evaluate oxygen, carbon dioxide, pH, and bicarbonate levels. The partial pressure of oxygen in the blood is referred to as PaO2. Ano naman yung normal na PaO2? It's 82-100 mm mercury. Okay, naalala nyo to, guys. Ito yung lesson sa fluid electrolyte balance and acid-base balance. Okay, kung merong metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis or respiratory acidosis or respiratory alkalosis. But on top of that, um, we are saying that this partial pressure of oxygen measurement through the ABG is more accurate than your autosat. Okay? Ano ulit yung normal partial pressure of oxygen sa ABG? It's 
80 to 100 millimeter mercury. Tapos yung O2SAT is 94 to 98 percent except for patients with COPD because mababa lang siya which is 88 to 92 percent. So guys, si hypoxia, makikita siya through your otoset and your ABG. So marami siyang causes ranging from respiratory and cardiac conditions to anemia. Hypoxemia, on the other hand, is a specific type of hypoxia that is defined as decreased partial pressure of oxygen in the blood measured by an arterial blood gas. Early signs of hypoxia are anxiety, confusion, at nako restlessness. When you see patients na bigla na lang naging restless or naging confused, think oxygenation. May oxygenation problem ba ang pasyente nito? Ano ba ang sakit ng pasyente ko? As hypoxia worsens, the patient's level of consciousness and vital signs will worsen, will increase with increased respiratory rate and heart rate and decreased pulse oximetry readings. So, kasi nagko-compensate yung katawan, mm, mag increase yung respiratory rate niya and heart rate niya. Magko-compensate siya sa kakulangan ng oxygen sa blood. Okay, late signs of hypoxia include bluish, nako, nag-blue na si pasyente, bluish discoloration of the skin and the mucous membranes called correct cyanosis, which is most easily seen around the lips and in the oral mucosa. A sign of chronic hypoxia is, just like the picture on the left, is your clubbing of the fingers. There is this gradual enlargement of the fingertips and yung angle niya na nagiging abnormal. Okay, what are the signs of hypoxia again? Early signs are anxiety, confusion, and restlessness. And increased levels of respiratory rate and heart rate. While your late signs of hypoxia include yung cyanosis na. And a much more later sign which is because of chronic hypoxia is already your clubbing of the finger nails. Okay, at this point in time, probably some of you are already sleepy or even hungry. So, take a break. Have a... Or better yet, mag tayo. Inhale, exhale at counting stretching. Okay, moving on with our assessment. Mm, you will find the table in this slide which on the left nandoon yung signs and symptoms and on the right nandoon yung description i know that you're very much familiar of all these so let's just anyway let's just go through that okay um the first is restlessness patient may become increasingly fidgety move about in the bed demonstrate signs of anxiety and agitation Restlessness is a very early sign of hypoxia. I will repeat, pag makita natin ang patient natin na restless, ang iisipin mo kaagad, may oxygenation problem ba ang pasyente ko? Is there a ventilation problem or a perfusion problem in my patient? So, mag-a-anatomy and physiology ka na sa utak mo and then you will know that it's time to refer your patient's restless condition to the doctor. But of course, you have to validate your observation first. Baka naiinit na lang si pasyente, di ba? Tapos inisip natin, nako, oxygenation problem na to. Baka kailangan na akong mag-intubate, no? Minsan, may ganun eh. Nakikita ko, may isang doktor. Joke lang, ha? Naku, mga kaibigan nating doktor dyan. Sabi niya ganun, Mrs. Nahirapan kang huminga, restless ka, i-intubate kita. Dala-dala niya, niya, na niya yung guide and that. <laughs> Sabi ng pasyente, he covered his mouth and he said, Wag po, doktor, wag po. And imagine the patient was alert and very much breathing well. So, nurses, we have to always validate our observation first. Kahit sinabi ko na pag restless, baka may problem in oxygenation, abay baka lang naman. At baka naman naiinitan lang yung si pasyente. So again, um, we connect that with our anat uh, yung concepts natin kanina. Okay? Later, we will be talking about some cases para medyo ma magkakonect-connect na ito sila. Okay, next 
Another sign and symptom is your tachycardia as a compensatory mechanism to the loss of oxygen or to the low oxygen levels. It's an elevated heart rate above 100 beats per minute in the adults which can also be an early sign of hypoxia. Takip niya ganun din a compensatory mechanism for low oxygen levels of in the body. And of course, our very famous dyspnea or our shortness of breath. We also have a very low otosat. And there is this, use of accessory muscles. Ano nga ba ulit yung accessory muscles? Yes, your abdominal muscles and your intercostal muscles. Nako, lalo na sa baby. No? When you see that your patient is abdominal breathing na yung ginagamit niya, you'll take a look at their their nose, no? Nako, nag-flaring of the alanasi na yan. Noisy breathing, of course. Okay? Flaring of nostrils or first lip breathing. Position of the patient also. This is very famous. Ano yung position ng patient natin? Okay? Patients in respiratory distress may sit up or lean over by resting arms on their legs to enhance lung expansion. Patients who are hypoxic may not be able to lie flat in bed. So, ito na yung ano natin. Ilang pillows na yung ginagamit. And that's part of our documentation, by the way. You can always document that the patient requires two pillows, three pillows, four pillows in order for him or her to breathe freely or, yeah, easily, easier. Two pillow hypoxia, three pillow hypoxia. Yes, correct. Okay. Ability of the patient to speak in full sentences Kasi the patient is, so, is, is still having this nga And feels so, so tired And yun, may activity intolerance na kahit Yung pagsasalita nila is affected They only can talk about two to three sentence, uh, two to three words in a sentence Tapos yun, hirap hirap na silang huminga No? Skin color, of course, very famous Nako, lalo na sa mucous membranes natin Okay, there is cyanosis. And then there is confusion and even your LOC, your loss of consciousness. No? It's a worsening sign of hypoxia. And of course, you're clubbing of the fingers. Clubbing is a gradual enlargement of the fingertips and a sign of chronic hypoxia. And we all know that already, right? Now, let's move on to documenting and reporting and referring our patients to our doctors. In the next slides, mga tatlo, apat siguro na slides moving forward, I have presented their case scenarios, okay? case studies, which will require you to think a little bit. Pero sasagutin ko din naman. Okay, these are common scenarios in the hospital. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Okay, the first scenario. Bob has a history of COPD and presented to the emergency room with increasing shortness of breath. He is speaking in three-word sentences and sitting leaned forward with his hands on his knees. We call that the tripod position. He feels warm to the touch and says he's been coughing up thick, yellowish, greenish sputum now what two vital signs do you want the most okay autosat and respiratory rate because you suspect bob is dealing with a pneumonia you want to get some information about his oxygen status and the fastest way bakit mo naisip na may pneumonia because he said he was coughing up anong kulay ng sputum yellowish to greenish pag ganyan parang pneumonia na yan diba so because we suspect that bob has pneumonia you want to get some information about his oxygenation status and the fastest way to do that is to measure your o to sat and you count your you count the respirations you would also follow this with a full set of vital signs perform a focused respiratory assessment and anticipate the doctor ordering a what do you think wbc 
sputum and sputum culture and chest x-ray okay is this already happening in the hospitals na before tayo mag uh, um, order ng antibiotic there should be a culture and sensitivity test i hope so okay chest x-ray very famous so is bob's problem ventilation or oxygenation ano nga ba ulit ma'am yung ventilation sa gas exchange ito sa alveolar level yung oxygenation sa buong katawan ito na sagot the fluid field alveoli are preventing adequate gas exchange kasi pneumonia ba? Diba? may consolidation ng phlegm doon mismo sa lungs so syempre may dead space ka si alveoli and walang nangyayaring gas exchange sa areas kung saan may consolidation ng phlegm so Bob's problem is oxygenation, hindi siya ventilation kasi nakakahinga pa naman siya oxygenation you'll anticipate what? supplying supplemental oxygen and administering ordered medications such as antibiotics and corticosteroids very good now let's move on to the next case okay, this next scenario balikan natin si Sally Sally, kanina sa introduction ko, no? Sally has been brought by a family member who found her unresponsive on the bathroom floor. Why they didn't call an ambulance is anyone's guess. Basta dinala na lang siya doon. Okay? But nasa hospital sila. Now, you notice that Sally is breathing only 7 times per minute. What other data do you want to obtain? O to SAT, Glasgow Coma Scale, bakit? Because... Sally is unresponsive. So, you check for the GCS. Of course, your other vital signs and your focused respiratory assessment. You hook Sally up the monitor and notice that her autoset is 77% on RA. Nako, masyadong mababa, diba? Her GCS is 3, meaning she does not open her eyes or move her body in response to any stimulation, kahit pain. And makes no vocalizations. Hindi na siya talaga nagsalita. Her lungs sounds are clear, but her respirations are very shallow and slow. What could bring about this shallow and slow respirations? So what do you think? What kind of problem is Sally most likely having? A problem with ventilation or a problem with oxygenation? Most likely, Sally's problem is with ventilation. Her respiratory rate and depth are just not adequate leading to her decreased O2 sat. Now, if you were to obtain a PaO2 from the AB, from an ABG, what would you expect it to be? Normal or low? If you said low, you are probably right. Good job. So now that we've determined that Sally's problem is most likely due to poor ventilation, nako, hindi siya, hindi siya humihingi ng maigi, no? So, what do you Naghang. Okay, I'm sorry, naghang po. Um, Sally's problem is most likely due to poor ventilation. So, what do you immediately do next? So, you perform assisted ventilation with a bug valve mask at oxygen running at 10 to 15 liters per minute. Call for the doctor and prepare to intubate. Of course, guys, you need your doctor's orders for this and your doctor will not know if you will not refer okay okay still about sally the family member has finally stopped panicking and has been able to tell one of the nurses that sally has a degenerative disc disease and wears a fentanyl patch to deal with the chronic pain yung source ko sa case na ito guys is sa labas no so, you quickly do a scan of Sally's whole body and find not one, not two, not three, but four fentanyl patches in various places. Ano kaya ang ginawa ni Sally but apat yung fentanyl patches niya? So, now what do you do? You refer the patient for a possible administration for an antidote for fentanyl which is Narcan. And then of course, we remove the fentanyl patches and then continue assisting ventilation with 100% oxygen until Sally regains consciousness 
Okay, still, still about Sally. Ngayon, the Narcan has been administered and Sally wakes up with guns blazing, sabi doon sa case scenario. She was agitated, in extreme pain, and mabuti naman, breathing on her own. So, what do we do next? Parang na-stabilize na siya, no? Yes, wala nang problem sa oxygenation, but this can happen again. Why? Because we are thinking that Sally just had had a, just had a suicidal attempt. So, we assess Sally for suicidal ideation, then send her home when she states that it was an accident. Well, continue monitoring Sally for respiratory depression, send Sally to the med search floor while you wait for a psychiatric consultation. Provide Sally with education about fentanyl patches before discharging her from the ER. Baka hindi siya nagsusuicide. Baka sobrang in pain siya and thought that if I put in four fentanyl patches, baka mas mabilis gumaling. Okay? So, choices ito, no? You found out that Sally is breathing on her own. So, what do you do next? A. The assess mo si Sally for suicidal ideation and then send her home if she says it is an accident. B. Continue monitoring Sally for respiratory depression. C. Send Sally to the med search floor while you wait for a psych consult. D. Provide Sally with education about fentanyl patches before discharging her from the ER. Hopefully, you choose B. You continue monitoring Sally for respite depression. Though naloxone works great at reversing opioids, it doesn't last very long. Without knowing how long the patches wear on Sally's skin, you really have no idea how much systemic fentanyl is still running through her system. We will monitor Sally for signs of respiratory depression and administer additional doses of Narcan until the fentanyl has cleared. We would also want to ask Sally what other medications she may have taken and assess her for suicide risk. If this was an international int intentional act, she'll need to be held and evaluated by a psychiatrist. If you answered C, you were probably correct by thinking that Sally may have possibly be admitted while we get a psychiatric help on board. However, a med search floor nako, am I recording? Yeah, am I rec I am recording. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> Minsan kasi technically challenged din itong inyong um, lecturer. So, I'm sorry. Okay, going back, nasaan na tayo? If you answered C, which is send Sally to the med search floor while you wait for a psych consult, you were probably correct in thinking that Sally may have possibly be admitted while we get a psychiatrist, psychiatrist on board. However, a med search floor would not be ideal as she needs to be closely monitored for rest by depression during this time. So, mas maganda, nasaan siya? Nasa ICU siya. And possibly even on a continuous naloxone infusion. Kasi hindi nga natin alam gano'ng katagal yung fentanyl na nasa katawan niya. Okay? Moving on to the next. Okay? We're done with Sally. Let's take another case. Pag-usapan natin si James. Si James has been brought in by an ambulance for what? For increased shortness of breath and extreme fatigue for days. His wife states that she has noticed some black tar like stools, but thought it was related to something he ate. Napansin talaga ni wife yun, ano? Yung kanyang black tar stool. <laughs> okay. So. Your first impression of James is that he is incredibly pale, lethargic, and has a weak, thready, and rapid pulse. He's telling you he just can't catch his breath and he's beginning to get a bit confused. What other information would you like to have? What do you think? Ano kayang sakit ni James? Pwede, oxygen saturation, blood pressure, and... CBC, bakit mo siya kukunan ng blood pressure? Baka low blood pressure, so low cardiac output. Bakit CBC? The patient may be anemic. No? Okay, tingnan natin yung sagot. Pwede kang tama, no? May anemia siguro ang pasyente. Pero, remember that the patient exhibited black tarry stools. 
Okay, the patient is exhibiting a classic sign of gastrointestinal bleeding. Anong anong GI bleeding ito? Upper or lower? Black tarry stool. Upper. And is now suffering from respiratory distress and hypovolemia kasi nagbleed na siya. 'Di ba? So, pag tingin niyo ng blood pressure niya mababa or mataas, what do you think? You check James' vital sign and notice that his O2 sat is 88% on room temperature. His heart rate is 123. Masyadong mataas and BP is only 80 over 52. While you wait for the CBC, the MD orders a fluid bolus to address the low BP and oxygen to maintain levels above 92%. What do you grab first, the oxygen mask or the fluid bolus? If you answered the oxygen mask, Then you should get another gold star. A B C palagi, breathing lagi, airway, breathing and circulation. Last na si C. While both are important, prioritization often falls down to which item can be done more quickly. Aside from that, kailangan breathing mo na. No, still call our A B Cs. At mas madalas, mas mabilis nga naman gawin ng oxygen mask na kaagad. An auto mask is easy to apply, while the fluid bolus is going to take at least five to ten minutes to infuse. So you get the mask on, James, and start the 500 ml fluid bolus. While it is infusing, the lab calls and tells you James has a critically low hemoglobin levels. Now, what do you think James's core core, core problem is? His breathing is fine. Oh, na rin ko na yung sagot sa inyo. Sorry to the letter P, ba? <laughs> his breathing is fine, but he simply doesn't have enough hemoglobin to transport oxygen around his system. So while oxygen may help in a situation, what's really going to help is correct the blood transfusion. You get two units of packed RBCs into James, who pinks up. Starts breathing more easily and state he feels so much better. Okay. So we have discussed three case scenario. Na hindi lahat respite pero lahat may problems in oxygenation. Yung isa upper GI bleeding eh ang layo di ba sa respite pero labored breathing din siya because perfusion wise kulang siya ng oxygen. Okay. Let's move on to. Managing our patients with hypoxia. Acute hypoxia is a medical emergency and should be treated promptly with oxygen therapy. Failure to initiate initiate oxygen therapy when needed can result in serious harm or death of the patient. Although oxygen is considered a medication that requires a prescription, means and there is. Parang may mga standing order, lalo na sa ER, no? Um, it requires a prescription, but oxygen therapy may be initiated without a physician's order in emergency situations as part of a nurse's response to the ABCs, which is our common abbreviation for airway, breathing, and circulation. Okay. After applying oxygen as needed, the nurse then contacts the provider, respiratory therapist, or The rapid response team, depending on the severity of the hypoxia, devices such as high flow oxygen masks, CPAP, BPAP, or mechanical ventilation may be initiated by the respiratory therapist or provider to deliver proper or higher amounts of inspired oxygen. Remember, guys, that prescription orders for oxygen therapy will include always two. Measurements of oxygen to be delivered. It's number one, the oxygen flow rate and the fraction of inspired oxygen. The oxygen flow rate is the number dialed up in the oxygen flow meter between one liter per minute and fifteen liters per minute. While your fraction of inspired oxygen, or if your FiO2, is the concentration of oxygen the patient inhales. Room air contains twenty-one percent oxygen concentration, so. The FiO2 for supplementary oxygen therapy will range from 21% to 100% concentration. We also encourage the patient to have enhanced breathing and coughing techniques. 
We manage oxygen therapy and equipment and assess the need for respiratory medications. If the patient is already on supplemental oxygen, we ensure that the equipment is turned on. It is set at the required flow rate. It is correctly positioned on the patient and properly connected to an oxygen supply source. If a portable tank is being used, check the oxygen level in the tank. Okay, para maka-prepare tayo in case paubos na siya at ilang hours na lang. No? Ensure that the connecting oxygen tubing is not kinked, which could obstruct the flow of oxygen. Feel the flow of oxygen from the exit ports on the oxygen equipment. In hospitals where medical air and oxygen are used, ensure the patient is connected to the oxygen flow port. Okay. Okay. Some patients may have a weakened cough that inhibits their ability to clear secretions from the mouth and throat. Patients with muscle disorders or those who have experienced a cerebral vascular accident or stroke are at high risk for aspiration pneumonia which is caused by the accidental inhalation of material from the mouth or stomach. So what do we do? We provide oral suction if the patient is unable to clear secretions from the mouth and pharynx. Okay, we also provide adequate pain relief if the patient is reporting pain because why? Pain increases anxiety and may inhibit the patient's ability to take in full breaths. A common side effect of pain medication is of course sedation and respiratory depression. So we have to be very careful about that, lalo na yung mga opioids natin. No? Okay, chest physiotherapy and specialized devices assist with a secretion clearance such as your handheld flutter valves or vests that inflate and vibrate the chest wall. Consider requesting a consultation with a respite therapist based on the patient's situation. Patients experience seeing hypoxia often feel short of breath and fatigue easily. Allow the patient to rest frequently and space out interventions to decrease oxygen demand in patients whose reserves are likely limited. So, nurses, we schedule our interventions on these patients para mas marami silang rest hours. Hindi na pasok labas, matusok tayo sa room nila. Okay? So, isahan lang kung maaari. Okay? Let's move on. Patients naman with uh, kailangan na nating tingnan no ano pa ang iba pang potential causes of this niya no kung wala pa din okay completing a thorough assessment sandali guys ha if a patient's level of this niya is worsening assess for other and their underlying causes in addition to the primary diagnosis are there other respiratory cardiovascular or hematological conditions such as anemia uh, which is occurring so you start by reviewing the patient's most recent hemoglobin and hematocrit lab results completing a thorough assessment may reveal abnormalities in these systems to report to the healthcare provider Patients with obstructive sleep apnea are often previously diagnosed prior to hospitalization. So, makikita natin yun sa history. The nurse may notice the patient snores, has pauses in breathing while snoring, or awakens, not feeling rested. These signs may indicate that the patient is unable to maintain an open airway while sleeping resulting in periods of apnea and hypoxia. Now, if these apneic periods are noticed but have not been previously documented, the nurse should report these findings to the healthcare provider for further testing and follow-up. Hindi makatulog si pasyente. Hindi yan malalaman ni doktor kung hindi tayo mag-re-refer sa kanila. No, especially night nurses. Sino-sino bang mga patient natin during our rounds at night yung hindi nakakatulog? 
baka meron silang obstructive slip up niya. Okay? Testing consists of using continuous pulse ox while the patient is sleeping to determine if the patient is hypoxic during these episodes and if a CPAP device should be prescribed. Another, anxiety. Anxiety often accompanies the feeling of dyspnea, of course, and can, it can worsen it. Anxiety in patients with COPD is chronically undertreated. It is important for the nurse to address the feelings of anxiety and dyspnea. Anxiety can be relieved by teaching and enhancing breathing and coughing techniques, encouraging relaxation techniques, or administering anti-anxiety med. Okay, guys. As I said kanina, pag nagsimula tayo, this is part 1 of 2. So, may part 2 po ito. Doon sa part 2, um, focus siya sa oxygen therapy kasi um, our doctors would just order give or administer to the patient 100% oxygen. Ano ba yung gagamitin natin? Mask ba? Nasal prong ba? Kailan ba tayo magpe-prepare ng nasal cannula? Things like that. So, nasa part 2 yun. If you will indulge further with me, there is this other part, part 3. Uh, sa psychosocial intervention naman tayo. How do we handle toddlers na may difficulty of breathing? How do we handle eto yung anxiety ng mga matatanda na may difficulty of breathing? Okay, will you still join me in the next presentation? I hope so. I'll see you there. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. Now, there is the assessment. Don't forget to take your quiz. 10 item quiz, multiple choice, and isang essay. Okay, enjoy! Thank you, have a good day, and God bless everyone.